Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things gardening, but also plant care. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and join our awesome crew. I post Monday, Wednesday and Fridays at one o'clock central time. And every once in a while, I'd like to do a creepy crawly video, which is a part of the creepy crawly series. And on this series, I like to talk about odd plant science all the way to mysterious plant locations, invasive species, black markets, you name it. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a phenomenon that can happen with plants. This is a serious, contagious disease that nearly all of us suffer from. And before we even start, let's take a look at a clip. It's not a triggering clip. It's a very, very basic clip. Um, and you guys let me know in the comments below what you saw first. Roll it. So if your answer is monkeys, you wouldn't be wrong but you wouldn't be right either. You just experienced plant blindness, meaning you suffer from plant blindness itself. Plant blindness is defined as our inability to see foliage and the green stuff behind all the clutter of the world around us. And it's actually a very common but dangerous phenomenon. So let's talk about why it's considered dangerous. This is, these three points have essentially been defined by professionals as why blind blindness is a serious issue. The first one being that we don't actually see the important roles that plants play in an ecological setting. So whether that be erosion or helping with the air we breathe, the food we eat, or even the clothing we wear. The second one being that we actually see plants as inferior to animals. This means that we would pick an animal's life over a plant life, which seems like a normal choice. And thirdly, it means that we don't understand how unique some plants are and how some of their ecological roles simply cannot be fulfilled without that plant's presence. Meaning essentially that if that plant dis disappeared, what other living beings would go with it? Whether that be insects, animals, or humans. Because we generally have a plant blindness, this has resulted in some issues when it comes to schooling, education, and what we actually teach our children. Out of all our biology textbooks we see in high school, there is only about 15% of those dedicated to plants. Even though plants make up huge portion of our species list here on earth. This lack of education has resulted in a lack of understanding of plants, which then exasperates plant blindness because it's actually thought that plant, plant blindness exists due to our inability to fully understand plants, their value, and exactly how they work. This then gets transferred on into our elder years when it comes to things like funding for crop research or plant science. It is actually very difficult for many scientists to get any sort of grants or funding for any projects that they may do. When it comes to conservatory efforts, over 60% of the species list, the endangered species list in the United States is actually plant species. However, the plant science departments and plant ecology departments only get 3.84% of the yearly funding budget for endangered species and conservatory dedicated to wards plants. This is unfortunate considering that it's estimated that climate change and just the general alteration of our planet with forestry and industrial farming will result in one eighth of all plants disappearing from the face of our earth. With very little education and even less funding for the people who don't suffer from plant blindness, the plant scientists, ecologists, and conservatory efforts, 
this is not looking too great when it comes to plant populations. So you're probably looking for this silver lining in all this, and don't worry, I have good news for you. Congratulations on watching this video, hitting that subscribe button, and joining this channel. You yourself have lifted plant blindness, and anyone who gardens has indoor plants, posts about them, talks about them, gets their friends and families involved, and helps people understand plants more, actually slowly lifts plant blindness. And the reason for this is because psychologists actually believe that plant blindness is a cultural issue, not something that's inherently designed in our genetics or something we can catch like the flu. It is actually caused by culturally how we choose to observe the world around us. So the more of you that decide to pick up the shovel, plant your first seed, maybe purchase your first home plant, house plant, are all making a conceited effort towards lifting plant blindness. The reason for this is because we're actually giving knowledge. Once we start learning how plants function, we tend to bond with them. Once we bond with them and care about them, we're less likely to just throw them in the trash or ignore them when they're passing by. Let me know in the comments below if you've experienced this on your plant journey, whether that be indoor plants or outdoor plants. Have you noticed that since you've gotten plants, you're starting to notice what are in planters around you, what's inside greenhouses, what other people's yards look like, or maybe even what your community garden looks like. These are all examples that plant blindness has been lifted from your life. So next time you think about not posting your photos about your harvest tomatoes or not posting your spider plant hanging in your window, please do and be sure to put a caption below about how you've learned about plant blindness and how you need to lift it. The only way to stop the extinction of plants, the only way to increase the level of education in the classroom about plants, and the only way to help plant scientists, agronomists, soil scientists, conservatory people, or ecologists gain more funding is by telling the people upstairs that we actually care about plants. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if you knew that this was a thing. I actually didn't know it was a thing and I found it when I was researching for my rare exotics black market uh, video. And I kind of was thinking to myself, well, why does, why are we just noticing plants now? Like what's the big craze? lately why is it starting to make the news why are greenhouses being broken into that whole thing and um it actually i was searching for the term <laughs> and i was it's like why are people starting to care about plants is literally what i typed into google and uh, there was an article about plant blindness and how uh, people tend to ignore it. I thought it'd be really cool to do a video on it just to kind of help you understand that connection that you're starting to maybe gain with your garden, with your soil, with your house plant, whatever the case is, and uh, encourage you to share your journey, whether that be through a YouTube channel, an Instagram account, a Facebook account, whatever it may be, um, because it's valuable and you're not just you know, showing off your tomato harvest, you're actually doing quite a bit for the world around you. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a really interesting topic. I thought it was fun, but I didn't think it followed my regular scheduling. So I thought I'd make it into a creepy crawly video instead. If you enjoyed this, be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button. And if you started an Instagram channel or a Facebook channel or a YouTube channel about gardening, houseplants, whatever the case is, make sure you drop it in the comment section below. Why don't we build this community up for something positive, which can be lifting plant blindness. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.